Well, there's no doubt that John McCarthy is one of the greats and continues to be one of the living legends in harness racing. He's driven winners all over Australia, feature winners, two Miracle Miles in 2005 and 2006 with Be Good Johnny. John took time out from his commitments at Menangle today to catch up and have a little bit of reminiscing and also to talk about his drives on Saturday night, Bling It On and Renegade Rose. Well, John, before we have a little walk down memory lane, just Saturday night, you're driving Bling It On once again and very good first up effort last time out. It was, Mike. He, uh, he went pretty good. He, you know, he'd been off the scene for quite a while and um, he, um, he just got tired the last hundred, but he boxed on pretty good and considering he's... Um, you know, the boys are collecting him every second day sort of thing, so he's, you know, collect for mares, so he's um, he's going pretty good, and uh, he'll only get a bit better as he goes along. He's up against King of Swing once again. He finished third behind Balraj and King of Swing. How do you see his prospects this time? Oh, you know, he probably, realistically he probably can't beat um, King of Swing, you know, but um, who knows in another run or two if he's handy around, around him, um, he, he, he might get pretty close to him. But, um, yeah, he's, he's going pretty good. He's just got to get a bit more match fitness. Got over to race four. Renegade Rose, a little bit disappointing last time out after arriving from New Zealand with some very good form for you leading up to that race. Probably was. Um, you know, we expected to go better, but she was on season a lot that week. And, um, you know, it's uh, pretty tough these days with the mares because you can't treat them for anything with uh, their seasonal thing now. It's springtime. And um, we had a couple of stallions there, King of Swing and Bling It On. And, um, you know, so that sort of put her off a little bit. That's what I'm putting it down to. And, um, she backs up, she's back in again this week, so we missed a week's racing with her and um, hopefully she'll go better. Strong company, do you see yourself leading or preferring taking the stalking role? Uh, she's out a bit wider this week and, um, you know, probably uh, in my mind at this moment, I think she's probably a little bit better as a chaser, but, you know, when you draw a good alley like she did those other times, you have to go forward. So uh, we're out a little bit wider this week, so uh, maybe we might just take a spot there somewhere. John, at the age of 37, you decided to leave Bathurst as a butcher. Loaded up the truck like the Beverly Hillbillies, four kids, six horses, full of furniture. You arrive in Queensland two days before Christmas. What were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, I know. It was a, it, I look back now, it was uh, pretty tough and it was pretty hot up there when we got there. But um, yeah, anyway, I probably would have come home the first six months, but um, the kids had all settled in at school and they liked it. So... Um, we boxed on and um, I'm glad we did because, uh, you know, it's probably a turning point in my life and, and also my kids' lives. John, you were credit Trois Frères running third in the Inter Dominion behind Smooth Satin and Shaker Maker as the defining moment in your career. Uh, it was early, Mike. Uh, yeah, he was probably the first real good horse I got up there. And then, um, you know, we were lucky enough to come across... Um, Cobbity Classic and then uh, and then you know like Johnny and Fleur Lil and a few others come along and um but he was probably the first one that sort of got us rolling and that it took me probably two years to get a Queensland owner to actually train for I was buying horses and getting them out of New South Wales and just chipping away for a couple of years till he came along and then once we got him well then we, we got more owners on board. I bought that flow to Queensland for that first trip John was a very nice time in Magic Bubbles. Yeah she she was she was the breadwinner for us, Mike, you know, we, we were pr pretty much didn't have any money when we went, but um, she just always won a race when we needed her to win a race, and um, she kept us pretty much going until we come across some better horses. 2005 and 2006, back-to-back -back Miracle Miles with Big Good Johnny. The scene both of those nights, John, were outstanding. Yeah, well, you know, you remember the old Harold Park days, and, um, you know, when it's packed out, and... Um, you know, we had a good cheer squad there. My daughter was at uni in Sydney and uh, well, there probably was a hundred of her friends all rallied, got, got together with the green t-shirts and um, and it, it sort of made it more special, you know, really. And um, yeah, those days are hard to find again now, you know. Yeah, the atmosphere on both those nights were electric. As you said, the t-shirts, the signs, Be Good Johnny, the music of Johnny Be Good, it certainly added to the atmosphere and Harold Park provided an atmosphere like no other. Oh, it did, Mike, and, um, you know, and Gloucester Park's the same at the moment. They, they, you know, they're small tracks. We, we are outgrowing them as far as, well, the horses are outgrowing them, not so much the people. We're going that fast, and, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they, they're getting around corners that quick now. Like, it's, you could probably get more injuries if we were still racing there, but as far as atmosphere goes, like, uh, yeah, you can't beat it. John, winning your first Miracle Mile with Be Good Johnny or defending the title, which meant more to you? Um... 
probably I always I probably, you've probably got to say the first one because it's the most exciting um, and the second one um, you know we went into it as a you know we were one of the favorites uh, and I had a good draw again as well so um, probably more pressure the second time but it's the first time you know I didn't probably really expect to win it it was just I had a good draw and I had a good run too but um I don't know maybe the first one they're both pretty good I'd like to do it again <laughs> what made him so special John uh, he just had raw speed and um, he was a bit of a scaredy cat horse you'd only have to sort of just say boo and he would jump and uh, not, not an easy horse to train or drive like he was um, like driving a bit of a time bomb he could spook at anything and um, but I think that's what made him fast he had um, fast twitch muscles and I think that's because of he was uh, a very sort of a nervy scared horse you know but he but he certainly could run fast another wonderful outstanding performer John and only true memorial was Sharky yeah he was a great old horse too um, yeah he uh, he was a little bit different to uh, Johnny he didn't have the speed that Johnny had but uh, as you know, a lot of those chewers, he'd lead up or sit outside the leader, and uh, he was so tough for a small horse. And he could just, you'd think, he'd just go along on a loose rein, you'd think he's got nothing left, but he'd just keep trucking, you know. And uh, to win five chewers, like not many horses will ever do that, you know. John, to date, you've had a wonderful career, and no doubt when you do decide to retire, you, you will go down as a Hall of Famer, one of the legends of harness racing. What special moments will you be taking with you? Um... Well, probably all the wins are good and everything, all the, all the races are so good, but um, my biggest kick in harness racing, I, but to be honest with you, is watching my boys do so good, you know, like um, Luke's done so good and, um, you know, Andrew's in, in America and he's, like, he's in the top three drivers over there and um, now Todd's over there at the moment and he's, um, you know, he's killing them at the moment, he's going really good. I, I just love watching them drive and... Um, you know, right at the moment, we sit there on a Sunday morning. I can't get any work done till 1 o'clock because I've got to sit there and watch uh, Andy's up at Mohawk at the moment and um, Todd's driving at the Meadowlands. So at Sunday mornings, we're just flicking from one screen to the other watching races. But I get more. I get probably the biggest kick is watching the boys do so good, you know. I think you've just about answered my last question I was going to ask you, John. You've, you've won big races, future races all over Australia. You've, you've had a remarkable career and it will continue. But the day you decide that you will hang up the, the silks and you're sitting there in your favourite lounge chair with your favourite drink and you're reflecting on your career and the career of your boys which is going to give you the most satisfaction um probably watching my boys i think you know i'm watching them keep doing good you know what i mean so um you know i've still got a little way to go yet um you know i, I don't feel like i'm washed up yet i can um i, I like training still but um you know, I am cutting my numbers back a bit. You know, when the boys were there, it was easy, easier for me to, uh, you know, you could always do, like, numbers, but um, it's just Narelle and I at the moment, so uh, we've cut back a fair bit. But it's good in a way because we might be able to do a few more things and we want to go to the States and visit over there. Um, I've got grandkids there now, so, um, yeah, so we're, we'll still keep training. I'm going to keep training while ever I'm healthy, but I just mightn't have too many, that's all. We might as well finish on another note, John, you just mentioned Narelle, your wife, for so many years. They say behind every good man is a good woman, but Narelle hasn't been behind you. She's been by your side all the way through it. Oh, yeah, it's a team effort, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of times they don't get the credit they deserve. And, um, you know, like they're there all the time, 24-7 through the bad days. And uh, sometimes you might come home a bit dejected from you might not have had a good night, but... Um, they always stick by and uh, pick your spirits up and we go again but um like she's she's the hardest worker we got out there you know like she's she's always first up and last last to bed so uh no she's hard to find one like her again i never would <laughs> well john you've been a wonderful ambassador and you continue to be a wonderful ambassador for harness racing and no doubt your three boys are following in those footsteps so congratulations to you on that school that they have been such wonderful ambassadors yeah thanks mike i appreciate it